Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another Throwback Thursday with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. This is a throwback I've planning, been planning to do for quite a while, and a lot of you guys, when you heard about it, you're like, oh man, we, I can't wait for that revisit, uh, because this is a beer that for a lot of people, or it's actually two beers, that for a lot of people was one of the first like mind-blowing type experiences in beer, or one of the first beers where you're like, wow, wow, this is well-brewed, and it's so complex and good. We're trying revisiting none other than Schneider's Eventinus and also revisiting their Eventinus Icebuck. So the Icebuck version. Schneider was kind enough to send me the Icebuck when they sent me the, their new Helles, the Landbier from the new lager pr uh, producing brand. I'm not sure if it's a separate brewery, but they, they're doing the Schneider Landbiers now as well, which are lagers. So they're not only doing wheat beers, uh, but you know, they sent this one and I thought, man, I need to revisit uh, Aventinos as well. So I went looking locally and I found a bottle that was kind of fresh. I think Aventinos is great with age, but it's also good fresh. Fresh, you're getting a li little bit more bright kind of banana vibes as far as I remember. Uh, it's an interesting beer though, because it almost feels like a hybrid between Belgian beer tradition and German, because there's almost like uh, double or quad like vibes to this beer. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I have a brewmaster who's talked about, he's, he thinks that there might be something about that and it's, it's one of his thoughts and I can totally see what he talks about. But otherwise it's an iconic wheat beer. It was the first like double buck that was done as a Weizen, so a wheat beer instead, which is really cool. You know, double buck is usually strong beers, but then does done like, you know, a Weizen, an ale. So like a German Hefeweizen, you guys know that. So that just done dark and strong. Quite innovative, innovative, I guess, for its time, uh, because Weizen is all the, you know, the light golden beers and like super banana and whatnot, and then doing something like this, that's just much more intense and rich and like dark malts and all that. So yeah, you know, very historic beer. I've had it so many times. It's been a long time since I revisited it. I think I, the last time I actually had an Aventinos might have been at the wharf a couple of years ago when they still had that on tap, local uh, English pub or it was the re-review kind of, I don't know if that was a re-review really, but it was, they did a, a Aventinus Vintage uh, at one point, which was like, I said 2012 vintage, I can't remember what it was, but they released a, like an, a, a, a stored variant. So you could try it with age without having to age the beer for yourself. But yeah, iconic beer. I think most beer geeks know this. And if you don't, and you're new to beer and you're jumping into the whole bandwagon of craft beer and pastry and super fruited smoothie beer and all this, that's also totally fun and games and whatever. And you know, it's a good way into beer because it's very approachable. This is bucket list beer. If you haven't tried, and, and I have a book that's like 50 beers you need to try before you die. This is one of those beers. If you're a beer geek, 100%. Eventinos. There's a, quite a few legendary beers like that with like some Belgian Trappist and there's some, you know, some select uh, English classic historic beers and, and stuff like that. Like uh, think Thomas Hardy, for example, stuff like that. Like there's a few select beers that's like, yeah, there's all these crazy hype whales you can try and trade for and all that's going on now. But like if we take like the test of time and something that's held up for a long time, that's just amazing. This is one of those beers, historic beer. But with that rant over, talking about the beers and whatnot, we should dive in, of course, to the regular version first, the ice buck one afterwards, which is the normal one, just freeze distilled. 8.2% uh, for uh, for the regular Aventinos here. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Bites and double buck. Using my Aventinas glass way back in the day, the the people of Schneider was, uh, actually Stefan, their marketing manager, was kind enough, to, it's the first beer mail I ever got on the channel was from Schneider because I reviewed their uh, regular, their original, which I loved. I think maybe also Aventinas, but I talk about something like, well, did I review Aventinas? I'm not entirely sure. But they, he sent me a box of all kinds of stuff and I talked about how I had lost my original Aventinas class because it was destroyed. And he was kind enough to send me a new one, which is awesome because it's a very unique wheat beer class. But it looked beautiful in the glass. When I just poured it, it had like the most crazy thick head. And you can just see the carbonation streaming on the bottom of the glass when you pour this. There's just so much carbonation. I think it was seven or nine grams CO2, seven grams CO2 per liter. That's a lot. But that's usually like traditional wheat beers. So they have a huge amount of CO2, almost like champagne-y. But it looks nice, like a ma hazy mahogany color because it's, it's hazy, of course, because you pour some of the yeast in, swirl it around, pour it in, because it's a wheat beer. 
Maybe that's something I'd do with a really aged bottle, I don't know. Uh, but otherwise, it looks really good. Nice, tight looking beige head. Let's take out the aroma on Eventinas. I'm just gonna move things around so I can sit here. Let's check it out. Oh man, <laughs> that smells great. I know they've done this in cans too, and I've heard from a lot of people that the can just doesn't hold up to the bottle version. Possibly because the bottle is bottle conditioned. I don't know if the can is can conditioned. Uh, basically meaning re-fermentation in the bottle. But yeah, it's huge freshly baked banana, but like banana bread, because there's a huge like caramelly fudgy kind of breadiness. And then it has like those almost belgian vibes. Like there is a spiciness, like a black pepper phenolic spice. You mean you find that in Geitzen yeast as well, but also with like some dark fruity vibes. And like, it's almost like belgian -y. It's just like this huge stewed banana almost, like a, like it's really warming or caramelized. I think when you like saute banana and sugar, it's almost like that, like caramelized banana. And loads of it. There's also some clovey spice to it as well. There's a good, great balance between both fruitiness and spiciness. But it leans definitely to a huge fruity side, maybe because it's fresh. But yeah, man, there's a lot going on. It's a complex beer. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Let's revisit Schneider Martinez. Fuck, that is so good. That is such fucking well brewed beer, man. Holy shit. I haven't had this beer in a long time. It is just marvelous. And this is the perfect temperature. I had it in the fridge for a day or so and then just before the review like 30 minutes before I took it out of the fridge so it's like lightly chilled because it's a wheat beer after all and all the sweet banana I think can get a bit cloying when it's warmer but mm, great great stuff really fluffy really fluffy slightly airy mouthfeel because of all the carbonation and just like the wheat of course man such a great beer. Really jammy as well. Like I said, some jammy kind of dark fruit. Really banana, like that crazy intense, like caramelized banana. Almost like there's a hint of vanilla in there too, like vanillin. Oh, and a drying finish that's almost slightly woody, like. And then lots of clovey and black peppery spice on there as well. Mm. Man. I know some people have said like they feel like Snyder has gone a little bit downhill with some of their beers. I don't know, man. Everything I've had as of late has been crazy good. Both this and also um Hopfenweiser was also just like fucking awesome beer. Like this is just so like good. If you love wheat beer, this is just again, if you just love beer, it's a must try. Like I'm a must try. Fuck it's good. <laughs> And it's not, you know, like, it's not like crazy thick or anything. It's so balanced because it has like crazy high drinkability too. Like there's almost like a slight hint of a caramelized red apple for me as well. Really nice chewy bready malt. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's almost a dark fruit vibes you get from Belgian beer in there. Like almost Trappist-like, but it's, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure if they use two yeasts for this or what they do, but you know, it could be. But it could also just be because of all those, you know, Munich malts and whatever they put in here. I, I'm guessing this recipe is held to like, is held pretty secret. Um, but it's a fantastic beer and it's a beer that stood the test of time and still does to this day. And I think a lot of people still really enjoy this beer to sip and enjoy. And, you know, it's not something you're going to slug down because it's like quite complex. But it's just, it's just a joy to drink. I mean, the, the balance of complexity and drinkability on this is really good. Like... This almost gets me excited about Weizen again. I haven't been excited about Weizen, you know, in a long time. I, the only time that really happened was prior to the revisits of Snyder beers was with um, the Weizen book from uh, Zentna. That was also insane. That was even more banana like heavy than this. This is a bit more well balanced, but it's it's really good. Mm. Long nostalgic review guys. I'm sorry, but that's how it is sometimes with Throwback Thursday, but let's try and move on 
to the ice buck version. So what they basically do is they make the ice buck. It is this 12% because of freeze distillation. And it's not the first, ice buck is a big thing in brewing. It's a big thing, you know, in Germany. A lot of breweries do it, does like ice buck versions of their double box and whatnot, where they freeze distill it to get it higher in ABV. And it's famous as a technique for being used to create really strong beers, like they've done at the Schlossbau in Brewdog, where they've done all these crazy, crazy strong beers. And also brewers cheating, because technically you can still call it a beer when it's freeze distilled, because it's just freezing the liquid. It's not technically been distilled. Like you basically just freeze the beer and all the draw offs you have is what you save. So all the water that's frozen you store and then you concentrate flavor and everything and, and you get higher alcohol. Uh, but it's technically not distilling, so you're, it's technically still a beer. Uh, also often, you know, it's 12% this year, so it's not crazy. It's just for concentrating flavor, I'm guessing, you know. Uh, it's not, you know, as with the crazy Brudock stuff where they just went nuts with, uh, you know, was it 60 some percent was that even it? I can't remember. And the company that cheated with it, uh, that did the Armageddon. Uh, was that Armageddon it's called? I think I might have reviewed it on the channel. It was, like it's, it was announced to be the world's strongest beer and the dicks did snake venom that still to this day gets traction, which is crazy. Once in a while a news article pops up, but it was, you know, it was not that strong at all. They just lied, put it on the label and tried to sell it as a premium. And then after being analyzed, it was not more than like, I think it was like, was it 12 or 16% or something like that? But, uh, you know, this is legit. And this is one of the first, I think, ice box I ever tried. And I, this is not one I've really visited, revisited a lot. Uh, so it'll be fun to see what we think of this one. So let's dive on in the same thick looking head. We're using the barrel aged beer glass for this. And uh, yeah, it looks really nice. It's a very nice, well, it's the same color. It's maybe a bit more reddish in the glass because it's concentrated and uh, then brown, it looks, exactly the same on color the color on the camera it's like a mahogany kind of brown on in the glass and or in the slider glass but here it's yeah it's more like a ruby red with mahogany brown also hazy also a dense head also the same amount of co2 same hops everything malt but not the same level of abv so yeah let's take out the aroma on this one yeah <laughs> it's definitely just a really concentrated aventinas and more you know, compact. I really should have rewatched my old reviews from back in the day to, just to see what I think. But also I'm going into it unbiased, which is a bit fun because, you know, if I knew my old grade already, I would think, ah, it's probably around that grade. Right, right now I can't remember what I graded back in the day. But yeah, you know, this just smells like more complex Aventinas. Uh, I'm getting almost licorice vibes from this, like Annie's. Much, much more breadiness and dark fruit possibly because it's the ice buck is usually aged for a bit or conditioned cold, I believe, after being distilled or separated from the ice. They keep it for a bit before releasing it. It just smells like it's mellowed a bit more. Not like oxidized or anything really. It's just like a bit more mellow, less like really sweet banana for me. It's more, much more like crazy intense. It's definitely banana, but definitely more intense, like crazy caramelly, bready malt and dark fruit and like, you know, like really heavy. It smells more towards like a classic Doppelbach than uh, the regular version does, but it smells really good. Let's try it guys, cheers. And also thanks to Schneider for this one because they sent this bottle of ice buck. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Old school extreme beer, much sweeter. I think this was like 25 Play-Doh or something like that when they brewed this or what was it? how was it? Because it technically really should be the same. I can't remember how it was. It was something about Play-Doh and I think it was higher. I just quickly looked it up on the website. Uh, yeah, much more concentrated, much more caramel. It's like really, like really, really caramelized. Like a, like a brittle, caramelized kind of brittle thing. And then loads of like really hefty bread. Like a really fresh baked, heavy kind of... I don't know what kind of like a dark. I don't. I don't want to say rye bread because it's not as heavy as that and spicy. Even though it's spicy, but it's like a really like heavy brown bread. I don't know specific brown. Maybe like a hazelnut bread or some hazelnut roll or something like that. That's like quite dark and heavy because it's almost like something like that. Some like the the heftier breads you get in Germany that you're served with the, a lot of the classic food like uh, bratwurst and, and, and sauerkraut. Often the bread you have with that is like quite hefty. It's almost like something like that, and often it also has nuts. 
Because there's definitely more of a nutty vibe to this as well. Really well balanced too though for a 12% beer. It's also lightly chilled, but yeah, like really sticky sweet caramelly. There's definitely also banana, that's for sure. It's there, you know, but I, I feel like there's much more in this one. Mm -hmm. Just smelling it. No, I drink much more of this. Well, probably not because I'd be crazy drunk because it's an 8% beer, but this is more like a beer to sit and savor and, and sip on. And it's really good. It's I'd say in terms of style, again, it falls more towards classic Doppelbock. The wheat and, and, and phenolics and everything is like quite unique compared to a classic Doppelbock for sure, but it's just more towards a classic Doppelbock. And of course also the banana, even though it's not as intense as this, but it just, if you've ever had like, um, maybe Paulana, Ayanga Serapato is one of the best double bucks of Germany, more well, you know, or uh, I don't know, is it well received? It's all, a lot of classic German beers well received. I mean, like easy to get, easy accessible beer. It's more towards something like that, but just more unique, the, the ice buck. And stronger. And that's really good. It, I do taste a little bit of the alcohol, but not too much. I will say, I just prefer the regular, just because I'm, I'm just, I, I just really love classic Amentinas. I, it's just such a fantastic beer, and it's great fresh, and it's great with age. And also because the drinkability is much higher on this. Like, it's not as crazy sweet. Like, it is sweet, but like, it finishes dry, so it's like, like, the balance of everything is so great, like, Mm, it's just like that fresh kind of Munich malt taste to it as well. It's quite fun to have it this fresh. This was from January, this bottle. So yeah, this fresh, fairly fresh, you know, for this kind of beer, it's fresh um, because it's one of these beers meant for aging. But yeah, yeah, really good. Both are really good. I would go for, as far as to say, regular Aventino is a world-class Weizen Doppelbock, 95. Uh, it's a beer, this makes me want to just have some in the cellar once in a while to crack. It's just such a spectacular beer. It's cheap. It's like, if you buy it in Germany, I mean, it's so cheap. It's like 20 some crowns, Danish crowns a bottle. Like, like for a beer this well-made, it's awesome. I think it's maybe 29 in Denmark. It's not that expensive. And it's so well-made. You get a lot of bang for your buck too, if you're more into the effects, but it's just, man, it tastes good. And I'm gonna grade the ice bar just a little lower just because I feel like maybe some of the uniqueness of regular Aventinos is lost a bit. I will still say this is definitely a unique, you know, take on Doppelbock and, and also Icebock. But I just like, I love the drinkability on the on the other one and just like the, the better balance. This is just a bit more intense. Like if I were to drink a beer of this type, you know, really sweet and 12% and whatever, I'd rather have like a barrel aged barley wine. That being said, I think they did barrel aged Argentinas. I can't remember who reviewed it. Was it called Mein Cuvie Barrique or something like that? Red wine barrel aged that I really loved back in the day. So that being said, I could probably also like this is a lot if you add another dimension to it or just age it for longer. I think this is from last year. And this is one of those beers that also can do really, really well with age. But we, man, this was a long video, so we gotta cut it short here. This was fun. So yeah, let's go 95 for sure is a world-class beer regular Aventinas, and let's go like, still a 93. It's a fantastic, maybe even a 94. Still a fantastic ice buck, and it's not often that I really enjoy ice buck. Yeah, it is really good. Like if you love hugely caramelly banana-y beers, and you like Aventinas, but you want a bit more of a and power that you'd enjoy this a lot, that's for sure. Damn good beers. And again, I'm not just saying this because Schneider sent me the beers and all the nostalgia around it and everything. I think almost all beer geeks that's been in the game for a while, if you ask him about Schneider and Aventinas, they're gonna tell you it's one of the most, you know, fantastic and unique uh, old school German beers uh, in terms of, of the Weizen beer game, wheat beer game. Heave a some. So, yeah, very good stuff. It was really fun to do and to just have a nostalgic affair with Aventinas. It's, it's, it's a beer I should definitely revisit more often because it's so easy to come by fresh here. So, often. Unless you buy it in a gift box and get old bottles of it all over years, <laughs> which actually happened. But, really, really good. So, if you guys have a chance to try either Aventinas or Aventinas 
Icebuck from Schneider. Let me know what you thought of them. Fantastic beers in my mind. And again, especially this bad boy, one of the be must try beers of the world. So, as always, guys, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm gonna say cheers in some delicious German Weizen Doppelbock. Cheers. See you guys in another Throwback Thursday.